that how you can do it, Richard? Yeah, that's fine. I'll stand up here with the mic. Um, I'll pass it back. Of course, it's in the incline. Okay. Councilor Steiger. Yeah, a question for court. Uh, your 50000 increase in revenue, how much increase in expense did you have? Did you have additional court days to be able to create that additional revenue? We did not have additional court days this year. We have less this year than we did last year. So, so that was basically true revenue then? Longer days, but less. So, but did your expenses increase along with that? I didn't look at my expenses. I looked at budgeted numbers and they're on track, so I was saying, just from the early look, I was saying no, it hasn't increased to match the revenue. Councilor McGarvey. Um, back in your, in page three of when you started, mm -hmm. you were talking about um, $200,000 for a survey regarding the community service center. Okay. Two fifty, but you want to know what that's for, right? For a survey? Yeah, I do. It's, it's actually more than a survey. It's a grant we're getting from the state. Um, actually, our mayor was, was really integral in getting that. And so what it, it comes for... Sam, do you want to speak to this machine? Yeah, more? I can speak to it. This is when I originally had gone to the legislature asking for $750,000 for city hall improvement. We didn't get it. We got 250000 and they're not awarding money to city halls. They're awarding money to community center centers and community center development. Um, we had talked about, when we were looking at asking for the 750000 that council and I, we had all of us had a conversation that we want to spend I think it was estimated $120,000 roughly for a feasibility study of all the city property, city hall campus, so that we can have a design and a plan moving forward to seek further spending. So basically, that is money that was given to us by the state or appropriated to, this, to the city from the state, and a major portion of that's going to go to the feasibility study, and we haven't quite decided where the rest is going to go to the city hall. I thought that also included the roof for the senior center. In the That's in the CBDG. That's the different That's the different one. Right. That's a different yeah. one. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I guess it's not real clear there, but that's, yeah, that's why I wanted to ask you questions. What happens is in the process of a facility like this, an architect will do a master plan of the campus and site, but they also need to delve into what are the real needs. What does each department need in order to function most efficiently? Are, are the spaces laid out appropriately? So that's what the study will look <coughs> at is appropriate use of space and make sure that the space is are going to work for what we need, or do we need to enlarge some areas, rearrange some areas so that things flow better? Councilmember Steiger, are you talking about this building? It's it's all of the buildings we well, already I have. I don't want another time site. spent on looking at this building. Period. This but building is outdated. It, it's non-feasible. I don't want to spend five cents on. But, but the thing is, we need to know what each department needs as far as so space goes. I can it's tell you right now, <laughs> you've got seven people, eight people, in a little small cubby hole that probably is only an office big enough for two. It, and that's what needs to be looked at. How much space is really needed? What equipment are we going to need now and 20 years into the future to make sure that we have facilities that are sized appropriately. Do we need to look at different levels of security in a future building as well? So that sometimes you have the swipe cards for employees as opposed to keys and unlock spaces to protect uh, employees in the public safety aspect because that's a, that's a, a growing issue as well. So if I'm understanding it right, one of the purposes of this study would be to get all this information so that we could apply for future grants, and without a study like this, we wouldn't be able to get future right. grants. So it's just, unfortunately, it's the system we work in because we continue to throw our largest percentage of our taxes to higher levels, and then we at the bottom continue to beg those higher levels for the money back, and these are the 
hoops they make us jump through to get it, um, instead of just letting us collect the money at the lower levels where the most benefits are given to our citizens. Other questions from Council? <coughs> Um, back on page 16, you talked about the numbers. Did you talk about yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Your computer. On the left hand side. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just asking this way so I make my notes that count. It's on the side end. Thank you. Um, the code is going for finding businesses that are operating without business licenses. <laughs> Are these businesses that at one time had a license and just haven't renewed, or is it just people that have? It's both. Most of the time, people don't know they need to have a business license, and so or they're new and they haven't got around to it yet. Are there fines? Or yes. Fines? Actually, the um, the code enforcer wanted to see if we could work at a deal where we could, and I brought this to the finance committee and to the mayor, um, where we could waive some of those fees that came forward, like an amnesty. I mean, you know, amnesty type of thing, but. Why should we? I, I mean, my point was they need to pay what do what really do. Otherwise, the rest of the people that haven't spent time are getting penalized for doing the right thing. So we haven't, and we've collected a couple of them for and four hundred dollars. And I appreciate what he came to us for, just so we could help people get started. And we always are willing to listen to people and then bring it to the finance committee um, and forward from there if we need to. Okay. Well, my question is on the same issue: is how does this court enforcer? go in the community and find these businesses that do not have licenses. Is he going door to door saying what do you do for the day? He How actually do does go around and he sees businesses that are on the list. We have a list. Okay, so not everyone has a sign in their front door. Right, right. right. And How does he find these people? I'd have to bring him here for him to tell you, but he, he notices them. This is what he's done for a living and he knows when somebody's doing some work that maybe they aren't on a list and so he, he just as far as I know, I can get a better answer for you. Lance is very polite. Jack, do you know any difference of that? No. <coughs> part of it is that we do have a list of the current businesses that have yeah, been like. I'm sorry. Sorry. We, sorry. We, do, we do have a list of the current businesses that have business licenses. And when he's out on the field, if he knows it's a new business in, if there's a sign for it, if they're not on the list, he just lets them know that. Inquire see if they have gotten a business license, and uh, if not, ask them to go on and apply for a business license. Sometimes you get businesses that they get the state license, and they don't realize they need to get right. the city license. So we inform them on that. And other times we get people calling in and saying, "I have a business license, but they don't have one," and they say they're not intending to get one, and when they get it's a complaint that comes in. So yeah. it, it comes in in a variety of different ways, and how we find out. Most of the occupancies are zoned. I mean, there's, there may have been a business in it before, shut down, and was vacant for a while. Well, we have that list. If he goes out and sees that, vac that vacant, what was supposed to be vacant on his list, now occupied, then he can go in and, 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 and another, actually another big source where we find out is the Valley Regional Fire Authority when they go out and do their inspections. They'll let us know if they're doing an inspection of a business that they don't have a business license, or they'll ask us, do they have a business license because there may be issues with the fire codes with that particular business. Councilmember Stagger. Uh, don't we get information from the state, too? So if they have a state license, we can look to see if they have a city license? The, yeah, we should be getting we get a copy of the state licenses, then we can verify to see if we have city license. Yeah, we used to get that in the past. I don't know if it's yeah. uh, something that they will do us or not. But it should be available because I know other cities, they look at their, they get copies of the state licenses that are sent to them and well, it's verified. Sure. But we yeah. can take a look and see how that works. Councilor Putnam. One other thought on that. I don't know that we uh, have ever been able to use it, but uh, with <coughs> two administrations ago, we had started receiving through an outside consultant a reporting by business of all of the uh, sales and use tax collections uh, in the city.
that was to be used for this purpose for making sure everybody had business licenses. And I remember at the time I was chair of the finance committee had to sign a non-disclosure agreement on it and there was only <coughs> one person on staff who was also authorized to look at it because of the level of confidential information contained in the report. I don't remember seeing us renew that consultant contract in the last couple of years. So, uh, perhaps it's something we do. Uh, no, before, before that, this is when Rich was still here. Um, and Pam was still here. Yeah, Pam was still here. Pam had access to it, and I had access to it. And it was. Um, oh, and it was also for the destination based sales tax. Was everybody who was, right. Yeah, that's what we got. It might have a cross reference to that. It was every business that was reporting sales in this zip code to make sure that we were getting our share of that tax as well. And the state was willing to provide that information directly to the city, but in a format that nobody could read. <laughs> I remember those days. So are we obligated to do we are we obligated then if we find somebody that's doing business to report that to the state? Well if they don't have a state license, yes, I mean that would be part of the process. So but we do have don't we have a way to do it online that we look at? Yeah, that's what I thought. So We'll do it that way, but the, the good side of this is that we are finding this. Every city has this problem, and it's a matter of minimizing the impact and maximizing the revenue. And so, like I said, a lot of people don't even know they're supposed to. Some of them are really small businesses, but everybody has. Councilman Well, it's my understanding. I do this not every day, but quite frequently. Um, that when the client applies um, to the SS4 for the federal ID number, mm -hmm. right on the SS4, it SS4 it will show them the steps on to do your state and local. So if you're saying they're hiding, they're not hiding, they're just skipping. Right. But there is a way to um, <coughs> cross match to find. And I, I'm really surprised that that many people are hiding. Oh well. My, I, my, my only question is how is we going to go door to door and ask them, you know, they would have way up into it. We don't want to be that intrusive. So. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. So no, he's just out there now, and we had, remember we didn't have somebody out there for quite a while. So having him out there doing this is, is a good pickup for 2015 and, and beyond. Thanks for I thought one of the discussions we had uh, a while back was looking at alternatives for funding the senior center and it looks like we're pushing forward with business as usual. I thought we were going to look at potentially contracting those services out and to realize some cost savings or cost sharing. <coughs> Where are we at with that? Well, we're at with, right now, you're right, it's, it's sort of business as usual because we're trying to weigh what's going on as far as the cost. We've never really taking a look at the cost as a council or the mayor or myself. It's just been ongoing. Here's the cost of what it takes. Here's what they're trying to do to defer the cost, but it's never going to be a money maker. Okay? And, that, and, and most cities I work for, they don't run the senior center, but they donate some. But this one has been run by, by this community, by the city for a long time. And we're trying to see ways to cut costs and to minimize the impact of, you know, staff costs and any other cost that comes up and to try and get grants. We got a nice grant last year, but it's actually going to be used on keeping the infrastructure going. Uh, so and I know you talked about it and the council talked about the value of it at the retreat, and that's really going to be your decision. I mean, that's totally up to you. What I know was also talked about was the possibility of hiring um, some kind of manager, and right now the mayor and I have looked at that, and we're, we really think it's a, we want to hold off until next year to see how it goes this year. I'm going to be working closely with um, Joanne and Darcy. I haven't been so much in the past, but I, I can now, now that Lance is getting in, in, incorporated into the whole management of the city with me, um, and Jack as well. So I'll have more time in that area as I train my staff in finance to help them out and see what opportunities there are out there for grants, but there's not a lot. There is not a lot of grant opportunities. And I think the, the committee, the Human Services Committee, had some ideas of how to 
would generate more interest and that would generate more small revenue. And I think that's where we're going for 2016. And I'm waiting to hear back from them and I will be working closer with them as the mayor has done this year to see what their ideas are. Um, but it's something that all of council is going to need to give direction on going forward, I believe. So is this something that the committee is looking into? Options <coughs> for funding? Not as far as right now. No, not closing down or outsourcing it at this time. Right now we're just kind of looking at the activities that are taking place and assessing. There would be time to budget it in for right now. And doing that, we can make changes or look at it next year. But at this time, it's I guess I was under the impression that the retreat that we were going to look at possible alternatives. Um, We've been looking at different things. There's just nothing that, you know, the one thing we want to keep in mind is we are offering a huge service to the community and we don't want to take away that service either. And so, <coughs> weighing the pros and cons and looking at different options, and like he had said, there's not a lot of options. <coughs> we are looking at it from the technology standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.